Are you ready to do this, Matt? Yes, sir. Punch it, Chewy. Welcome, super friends, to the Fortress of Nerditude podcast, a safe place to talk about all things in nerd and pop culture. I'm Spencer Stapleton, and my co-pilot is Matt Shaw. We're two nerds that just refuse to grow up. Thank you for joining us. This is episode 212212. Wow. We release every Thursday morning. You can find us on the website, fortofnerd.com. We have links to iTunes, Google Music, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher, basically everywhere you can find a podcast. Stop by and relax a while. If you like what you're hearing, hit that subscribe button and you can get us automatically each and every week in your ear holes. Matt, 212, it is New York up in here. We've been doing this a while. How are you this wonderful week? Man, I'm good. I'm good. It's Christmas time. It is Christmas time. Kind of getting into that mode. Yeah. A little bit into the more into the mode i should say like the because there's like the christmas mode and then there's like it's christmas time like you kicked it into that other gear yeah we're getting there i'm not Ooh, saying it's okay. that other gear jesse and i were trying to choose a movie last night and we we're like well i'm not like ready for like the like quintessential mm. christmas movies yet like i'm not i haven't reached that point you're not you're not right. die hard ready yet i'm not okay sure yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, sure yeah. i'm not like muppet christmas carol ready okay or like a christmas story ready i'm more like the family stone christmas vacation mm. so okay anyway we were trying to choose a movie last night we ended on jingle jangle this is part of the of what we did this week uh the new netflix movie with forrest whitaker yeah how was that um it was good if you think about it too much, it doesn't make sense. Mm, okay. Um, especially the ending, you're like, what? How would they not know? That's all I'll say. Okay. How would these kids not know that? That Fair enough. literally makes no sense. But it's a fun movie, and the music's good. It's not overly Christmassy. But okay. It, it takes place at winter time? these are what i like to say like christmas adjacent movies like they're christmasy yeah. movies but like when you think of like classic christmas movies like there's you know there's like it's a wonderful life and the christmas story and for me die hard and sure, christmas sure. vacation elf things like that and then you've got like this stuff like fam like you said like the family stone it's a good movie. It's around Christmas mm -hmm, time. But mm -hmm. like, for me, it's not like a, I have to watch this. This is like my Christmas right. movie. Okay. Yeah. So Christmas adjacent, you're still. So it's, it's uh yeah, it doesn't even really, I don't think mention Christmas per se. It's about a toy maker, more like an inventor. Okay. And that's kind of what it is. I mean, I get Christmas is mentioned, mm. but it's not, it's not a central part of the story. At least in a family stone, it's like everyone's home for Christmas. Like, right. Yeah. It's yeah, a yeah. Christmas movie. This one, it's like, I'm a toy maker and stuff happens. And okay. I'm grumpy. And uh, that's pretty much what you get, but it's, it was good. It's not, and I'm going to watch it every year. Um, but it was good on last week. We recorded the pot. <laughs> we're on a weird podcast. It's day. I know exactly. things are so weird Sunday last week. And now we're recording an hour and 45 minutes later this week. Right. So last week we recorded a day early because on Monday of last week, we went to a resort in Austin. So Jesse and I packed up with the kids and we went to the Kalahari Resort. Ooh. Now, these are very, very popular, very famous resorts, apparently, in like the Midwest. Started in Wisconsin, I want to say. Probably the Dells. Like Ohio. Um, and if you watch the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade this year, there was a Kalahari Resort float. Did anyone watch that this year, though? 
I did. I oh. watch it every year. All right, well, Come you're on. you're one. Congrats. So <laughs> you're keep you're keeping them in business. Way if, to go. If you watched it, um, <laughs> they had their own float trying to advertise their new resort in Round Rock, which is just north of Austin. Okay. We booked this back when we were uh, in Sydney, Montana. So it was oh. that long ago that I booked this because it seemed really cheap, and we got a two bedroom suite for like half the price of what it is now um anyway it's it's this resort that the best way jesse came up to describe it and this is definitely the most accurate is it's like you're on a cruise ship Mm. it's not quite like you're at like a disney resort where everything is amazing and perfect but it's like you're on like a cruise ship resort okay where there's like four restaurants and there's like a sweet shop and there's like a Starbucks and there's like little grocery items that you can get. So you never have to leave. Yeah. And it's supposedly the largest indoor water park in the States. And when you stay at the resort, you get a ticket basically every day to go to this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Indoor. So there's other resorts like this, the Great Wolf Lodge. Great Wolf resort. Lodge. Yep. This is, yep. This is like the Disney version of that. Okay. Um, so anyway. And how many days did you do this? You said two, three days? We were there Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Okay. We, don't, we stayed two nights. So it was three days and two nights. Um, and it's only like, it took us like an hour and 20 minutes. So it's wow. pretty cool to have something that cool, that close to us, that we can kind of pop in for a weekend. Um, it was really, really fun. They did a great job, tons of decorations, and it was, it was a blast. We had a really, really good time. Nice. Um, and there were not a lot of people there. I would say mm. massive resort, massive, less than 200 people. Wow. I mean, they're brand new open, like brand new November, like mid November. So I think they're still trying to get the word out because yeah. we don't, yeah, we yeah, in yeah. Texas don't really know what they are, but apparently they're, and, they're hot shiz up in the Yeah, Midwest. yeah, yeah. And you talk, you tack on all the COVID stuff this year and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, so, Anyway, that was really, really fun, and that was pretty much our week. Uh, like I said, we did the jingle jangle thing, came back, and I had to work because I didn't really work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so I had a bunch of work I needed to do Thursday and Friday. Uh, we did a gingerbread house tonight with Emmy, and that was a lot of fun. Did you guys Jeez. did you guys bake your own gingerbread, or was like the one of the pre ones oh. you put together? Okay, one one of the pre ones you put together. I got gotcha. you. And spent ten fifteen yeah. bucks on some yeah ready made situation, the same one we buy every year. Do see, I grew up in a household where like my mom would like make the gingerbread, and like we yeah. put together these things. But like as an adult, like we tried one of these like a year ago, maybe with the boys two years ago. I understand why my mom would beat us with a wooden spoon if we got too close to the gingerbread house before she was ready to let us decorate with all the little candies and stuff. I understand that that's not a, it's not an easy thing to do with young kids. Mm, That's so we're not doing that until, and you know, Jesse's a big baker and she wants to, but Emmy and Lando are not at the age where that's no, it just doesn't make sense. No, it comes prepackaged with the candy, the icing, like everything. Why would I need? Yeah. Anyway, so she had a lot of fun doing that and doing countdown calendars, and she's all pumped for Christmas and stuff. So we're kind of getting in that Christmas swing, but that's really it for the week. It was mostly just partying and then working and mm. then just having a regular weekend where we really didn't go anywhere or do anything out of the ordinary. All right. I mean, that's not a bad week, though. No, it was a great week. It was I, a great week. I also saw when I got onto the old PlayStation and – was looking through my friend list to see what people were playing. I saw you were playing that old Cyberpunk 2077. I did. I how are, got it. How I, are you liking that so far? So it's it's good. Okay. Thankfully, thankfully I have a PS5. I'll say that because on PS4 and Xbox, I've heard so many problems. Like total yeah. crap. And it's not perfect on PS5 either. Yeah, I, I hear. Mean, I hear it's, it's really janky. Lots of bugs kinda, and little bit of i mean jedi fallen order had some bugs too right um, yeah, oh it sure honest. did yeah it, it sure did yeah. at launch and that's when everybody played it i haven't i mean i played it a little bit since um 
but it was similar to Fallen Order in the frame rate dips just every so often, and then some freaking funny like glitches. You're just like, what? nice, what? nice. And I was not really considering getting this game. It just looked like it wasn't my speed, and I don't care if you play it. My brother was super stoked about it. Um, but when I saw that it had a filter option for like nudity, I was all in. I'm yeah. Like, oh, thank you, because like I'd heard hypersexualized. Yeah. And again, not that I'm judging anybody who does that. You do you. I don't care. But I wasn't like I don't really need to see like anime. For me, yeah. F- for me, it's like if I can turn that off, great. But it's always yeah. like when I play a game that has let's just say more mature themes, not even like right. what's quote unquote like adult themes. I'm always mm-hmm. like looking over my shoulder because it's like I don't want my boys to walk because like inevitably if it's going to happen, my boys are going to walk in at like that one moment yeah, yeah, yeah. out of like a four hour session of me playing this game sure. where there's like 10 seconds of something that I wouldn't want them to see. The other mm-hmm. three hours, 59 minutes and 50 seconds is fine. And then they would walk in and I'm like, nah, dang it, I got to explain yeah. this now. So I, I do appreciate that at least... CD Projekt Red knows that like not everyone might want to have that on all the time. So they provide that filter. Right. And that's streamers too. And I know that yeah. that's part of why they did it is, and they have a an ability to uh, get rid of copyrighted music as well. So you don't get flagged if you're uploading. I YouTube. still heard there's one song in there that they can't get around and it's caused some problems. There's been some DMCA strikes, <laughs> but who knows, who knows, who knows. Screw you, music companies. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, it's I'm not super far into the game. Okay. And I'm a I'm a very simple man and this is not a simple game. Mm. I called my brother and I was like, "What should I do?" He's like, "Just play the game. Don't worry about all the mechanics and the crafting, just like just, learn how to shoot a gun and just go. And how to run around and drive a car and you'll have a ton of fun." I'm like, "Yeah, okay, I get that." Ah, fair so, enough. Yeah, it's 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 a game. It's a game. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, so my, so my week's been really good, but there's been a lot that's actually gone on. So I'm going to start with today and then kind of work my way back. We're going to, we're going to do a little time traveling, Matt. Uh, so today was Charlie's birthday was his eighth birthday. We, we, we kind of back and forth, back and forth. Like, do we have family over? Do we not have family over? You know, this question. And ultimately we kind of decided like yesterday that, we wanted to have family over and that my brother has been working from home. Like I have for a while now and his kids, because there was a big enough outbreak in their school, they've all been quarantined and doing school from home for like the last two, almost three weeks now. And Mm. so we had my brother and his wife and their four kids over, which was so much fun to see my nieces and nephews. It was so much fun. Like Jake, my nephew, who's like three, maybe going three, maybe going to four, like right on three. He is like, he's just like this like little ball of crazy energy and like wants to like wrestle and climb all over you. And it's like, yeah. I, I remember that stage when my boys were at that stage and it was so much fun because they're like a little like capuchin monkey that they can just like all over you and it doesn't <laughs> hurt. And like, yeah. it like you can just like easily manipulate them and flip them around and throw them. Like it's just so much fun. And so it was fun having him over there. But like my boy is now come and run. Like Charlie's eight years old. He jumps at me and he like leads with his knee. And I'm like trying to cover myself. Cause I'm like, I'm like, he's going to yeah. make it so I can never have kids again. If I want to, okay. uh, you know, he's like, they're just big. And my boys just, they want to, they really want to wrestle. And so if I'm not prepared, like they're going to crack a rib. So it was nice having my, my nieces and nephews over and seeing them. And my mom and her husband came over and my sister-in-law Reese came over. So like, it wasn't like a huge group of people. We didn't have a friend party or anything like that, but we did have people over. And today we, (laughs) Brita had baked one cake and Charlie this morning said, he said, you know, I really would like a Sonic cake, like Sonic the Hedgehog. And Brita and I were like, well, what do we do? Do we just get like blue icing and like, a Sonic toy or something. Cause like he hadn't told us he wanted a Sonic cake until today, the day of, and around like two o'clock this afternoon, we made a quick run over to the grocery store, bought a cake mix and made two round cakes and used a round cake. And then like cut out like the little, uh, the little head pieces yeah. and then put them together. And 
Rita found this thing online and we made blue frosting and she iced it up. I've got pictures. I'll put them on the socials. But he had a Sonic the Hedgehog head cake. That was his cake. It was Sonic the Hedgehog. And he was so excited. And there was balloons, blue and oh, yellow. Awesome. And there was a big number eight balloon. Like he, he was just over the moon. And he got to open up toys and he got to see his cousins. And he hasn't seen his cousins in like months and months and months and months. And they live two minutes down the road. Dang wow. COVID. So it's just like it. It was one of those things where, like, the night before, he kind of said, like, Daddy, my favorite day is my birthday. But because of COVID, I don't think I'm going to have a good birthday this year. And I'm kind of sad. And, of course, like, my heart's just breaking. I'm like, yeah. oh, buddy. Oh. Because usually I take them out to go have breakfast on their birthday. And I couldn't do that. It was just like, I... We can't go to a restaurant. So Brita got up early this morning and made like homemade pancakes and bacon so that we could have like a meal together. And I was like, yeah, why? Like, why? Why wasn't I there anyway? So today was Charlie's birthday, which, of course, pushed everything back. So we're recording at the old time. This is the time we used to record before we went uh, to video and went live. Uh, Going back, I started the Clone Wars this week, Matt. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, you. I want to do this. I've been wanting to watch it. Come on. And so yeah. I got, I got the thing and realistically, I kind of looked in the first season. You have to watch like two episodes from the third season and then an episode later in the first season and then like the movie and then like an episode. And then you can basically watch them the re the entire first season then in order. And so I was really like, eh, okay. And then I found a little secret. There was a Chrome extension that will change and take you to the next one you need to autoplay based off the list, which is off StarWars.com. So I was like, oh, I pulled up Chrome on the thing and I was watching it through there to get through some of those ones. So it just would kind of autoplay. And now I can basically just watch the entire rest of the first season on any of my TVs because I'm kind of past the whole like jump here to cool. jump there to jump here to jump there. So a Chrome plugin for the win that made that made my day really enjoying Clone Wars. It definitely has a little bit of a different feel than Star Wars Rebels only because like Rebels kind of starts you out and kind of gets you like you got to learn who Ezra Bridger is and you got to learn the all the people in Zeb and you know all yeah. Hera and whatnot in this it's literally like we're dropping you back into military conflict and here's clones and here's Anakin here's Obi-Wan, here's Yoda, here's Mace Windu, right. here's the Emperor. Like, it's all these characters you know. So it's like you don't have to go back and, like, tell a lot of origin stories. It's just, like, boom, 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 battles and conflict and stuff, which is actually kind of cool. So I'm uh, I'm excited that I'm actually now making progress and I'm invested in this, that I've wanted yeah. to get invested in for such a long time. And I had a couple false starts and stops. Uh, I've started reading my book, Rhythm of War. Not my book. I didn't write it. Uh, Brandon Sanderson did. Uh, Rhythm of War, the fourth book in the Stormlight Archives. Um, so I've just started that. I've got a long way to go. Uh, but that happened this week. That was really cool. Um, I played some, I played some games. I was streaming. I was doing the things. But the big thing, the big thing that happened this week, my truck, my old Dodge Ram... It's got some mechanical problems. It's got a cracked radiator. It won't hold any like coolant in it. Like I put coolant in, run the engine in, like it'll suck some of it through and like it'll help, you know, keep it where it needs to be. And then it like it just because the radiator's cracked, it just like the hoses are bad. It just boom, I got a puddle on my driveway, right? Come to find out it's got some other things going on, this, that. And Brita and I had really been pushing off like going and getting anything for years. Like I haven't had a car payment in like five years. Right. This weekend I went down to the old Chevrolet dealership mm. and after many hours of looking at what they had and haggling with them and haggling and like back and forth and like they were kind of doing this old bait and switch like, yeah, this is a 2019 with 14,000 miles. And they're like, no, 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 it's a 2020 with 14,000 miles. So we can't really cut much of a deal. And I'm like, this is what I can pay. This is what I'm yeah. comfortable paying. Like either you right. get there or you don't like, Back and forth, back and forth. And finally, I was like, sorry, guys. 
you you couldn't get there. You said you thought you could. You can't. That's okay. But I'm gonna take my business elsewhere, and I'm and I'm like, like, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Let us see if there's anything. Let me talk to my service guy and right, see if yeah, anything's yeah. just come in. I'm like, I'm like we've okay. looked at everything in the lot, and they went down to the service department and found out that a truck had just got traded in like late, late evening the the night before. And it was still being looked at. So like, it wasn't like none of the sales guys knew. So they bring it around and they're like, look, it's a 2018 Silverado. It's the color you want. It's got the normal size bed instead of like the short bed we were looking at. It only has 18,000 miles on it, which is only 4,000 than like the 2020. Yeah. So I was like, it's two years old. So someone else has paid the depreciation on it. Da, da, da. We get it back and I was like, okay. And of course it's kind of dirty. Like there was some pet hair in it and things like sure. there's some trash. And it's like, they're going to take it. They're going to clean it all out for me. And they're going to, you know, they're going to do all the detailing and whatnot and go over it with a fine tooth comb and make it look immaculate. But they're like, you know, if we could work a deal, could you get this? I said, you know, my number, you know where I'm yeah. trying to get. So it was just back and forth. And we started the haggling all over again. And in the end, I got it into a really, really good deal. I got it for probably about 3000 less than the sale value is according to like Kelly blue book and NADA, the NADA. And, and then I kind of worked a deal. It was like, I'll do this and I'll pay this down and blah, blah, blah. And so like, we finally like we finally kind of came to to terms. So I've purchased a new truck. Now I say new; it's like two years old, but to me, that's new. Um, oh yeah, that's new. It's uh, it's being cleaned and and ready for me. I'll probably take possession of it later this week. But I bought me a darn close to Dang. brand new Chevy Silverado. So Merry Christmas to you. Yeah, it, it's the funny thing was as Brita says, she's like, "Are you happy?" Like during one of the rounds of like negotiating when they're out of the office, I kept saying like, mm. I'm like, all right, give us the room. We'll talk. And so the sales guy's like, uh, okay. So they'd like leave. I'm like, I'm not going to talk in front of you guys. Like, get out of here. What are you weirdos? Right. But she said, are you happy? I was like, well, I'm not going to be happy because I've got to make payments again. And I haven't had payments for five years right. and I'd rather have, you know, got another year out of the truck and put money aside for a year and then right. gone and bought something cash or, you know, put a big down payment. It's just not the way the, the cookie crumbled this time for me, unfortunately. So right. I was like, eh, happy's a happy's a relative term, I guess. Sure. But once I pick this truck up later, I know I'll at least feel happy knowing that I'm not driving a death trap with my yeah, boys in it. Very good. And it will last us a very, very, very long time. It's awesome, man. And and I already have a decal picked out for the back sticker. I've got the uh, the uh, the the tree of Gondor. I've got that. I'm gonna put on the back window. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Because you know you got to be able to identify your vehicle from all the oh, others. I, every time I don't I put, I have a metal BYU. Yep. Thing that sports ball <laughs> thing. Sports yeah. Sports ball. It's just a logo. <laughs> a little magnet thing that I put on the yeah. back. That yep. way, like you said, I can identify it very quickly and easily, and so can Emmy. Yep. Which sometimes you need to be able to do. Yep. So, yep. anyway, that was my week. A lot going on, good times, nice. fun stuff. Matt, we got a lot to talk about tonight, so let's get to that uh, Rebel Intelligence. I think we should kill some Bothans. Let's do it. I always have to let you know many Bothans died to bring us this information. Rest in peace, you Bothans. All right, Matt, we are into Rebel Intelligence. What do you have for me this week? Well, as I guarantee you already know, Probably. the FDA has author authorized... Woo woo! COVID-19 vaccine for emergency use. Yes. So as we record this, the first wave shipments have been sent and received by many states. Yeah. And people have already begun receiving vaccinations. This is our first step back to a normal life. Yes. Yes. So fantastic. 
I mean, we don't get political, but you know, you applaud mm -hmm. the speed at which this was done. I did, whether you voted Trump or Biden or however you feel. Man, that that doesn't matter. Yeah, very fast. Yeah, and I'm not saying it couldn't have been done by another president. Obviously, it could have been done by anyone. I think but I think anyone in that position would have been like, "Hey, this should be a priority," right? Yes. It was pushed very hard. Yes. And we are very grateful that it was because here we have it and life is going to slowly get back to normal. Yep. I, I think that the target is for people like you and me to receive this before S summer. Six months from now. And, um, yeah. yeah. End of the second quarter, they said, is when yeah. like a flu shot where you can just go in and get your COVID. Right. Um, but... I'm so happy. Dude, this, this, is, this is good such news. Great news. Yeah, this is oh. good news for everyone. I, I was talking about it with my sister in law tonight because she's a nurse and she says, Hey, I actually, I actually could get this as early as like next Thursday. I'm like, do it, get it done. Like, you know, mm -hmm. and she's like, I don't know. And I was like, why? Because like, she's a nurse. And so like, she knows all the, like the science behind this. Right. And she says, my only concern, she says, is that, this was just done so fast, so much faster than most vaccines. She's like, I'm just a little hesitant about how fast that went through the process. I said, I get that. I said, but at the end of the day, like if the, if the scientists and the doctors sign off on this and they can show like they, they yeah. figured, they figured out how to defeat it. They figured out how to inoculate against it. Like as long as all the, gates have been crossed and checked and everything's been verified and tested. Does it really matter how fast? I'm like, let's just get back to normal. Let's, let's get healthy. Let's get protected. I, I love this news. I know yeah. I'm going to be like six months out before I get it, but I tell you what, Matt, if I was eligible to get it tomorrow, I absolutely would. Yep. So would I absolutely would. So would I. And and so for us, for us, this means, you know, more things are going to start opening back up and more things are going to like industries are going to be able to come back as as this rolls out. And as this, you know, gets to more of the world, yeah. like we're going to see we're going to see it impacting things that like we've known about, but maybe we don't like necessarily put so much thought into and go like, oh, yeah, we can do that again now because those places of business are open and hey, movie theaters are a thing again. Right. Right. Yeah, you're feeling pretty good. If you've got a summer 2020. I know that you're not feeling like, Oh, amazing, but you're probably right. feeling pretty good. Like, I... and people are going to be able to go and not be crazy uncomfortable yeah. by that time. Hopefully uh, people aren't afraid to take the vaccine, which yeah. we'll I mean, see. You do you, I guess, is what I would say. But please don't do you and get the vaccine because <laughs> right. yeah. science is good Big. and science is important. This, I mean, of all the announcements awesome. that came out this week, of which there's a lot of there stuff. Are there are many. This one was probably the most I was excited about. I mean, I, oh, I, yeah. I really was. Fantastic. I was like, all the other stuff we're going to get to is great this actually affects real lives in a very positive right. way. So, yeah. Yep. Uh, it's talking though about affecting lives in like a weird way. This is, this is a little different, but if you remember, maybe you do, maybe you don't, I wasn't around back then, but back in San Francisco in like the late sixties, seventies, there was a killer on the loose called the Zodiac and the Zodiac was killing people was sending in all these codes to like, you know, a, a newspaper and bragging about all the things. And like, this has been made into a movie. It's been covered a number of times in media. And the interesting thing is after a certain amount of time, the Zodiac killer just kind of stopped and there's speculation, you know, maybe he died, maybe he went to prison, da, 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 da. They're not really sure because no one's been able to identify him. But what is interesting though, is that one of his ciphers has just been cracked 50 years after yeah. he'd sent it in. So like he'd sent it in bragging yes. and it has just been cracked. And it, what's interesting about this is because it was done with some 
with some math and it was done with, you know, like trying to figure this out. They called it the th the 340 cipher, 340 okay. cipher, because um, okay. it contains 340 characters. It was sent to the San Francisco Chronicle in 1969. This person created this cipher in 1969 or earlier. It took 50 years for it to be cracked and it was done by three people from like Australia, England, I think the U S and they put up like this 13 minute video and they talked about how they cracked it and this, that, and the other. But what's interesting is before they went public with it, they sent it to the FBI and they said, Hey, can you verify this for us? And the FBI ran it and the FBI said, yep, that's it. You've cracked the cipher. And then they went public with the knowledge and the information. And the interesting thing is, is that obviously there's still a couple ciphers that are still out there that need to be done. They're, you know, like math geeks, people that really get into this, like breaking ciphers and codes is a really, you know, like a really big hobby for, for a lot of people uh, that are kind of in that world of like mathematics and whatnot. So there's still some stuff out there to be done, but like, we still have to remember that these ciphers were used by a killer who terrorized the San Francisco Bay area uh, in the late sixties, early seventies. And so the interesting thing was these people said like, you know, Hey, we're putting this out here, but it's in memory of all of the families, this, that, and the other. And so right. 50 years, I tell you what, Matt, I'm uh, I like a good puzzle. I like, uh, but if it, if it takes you 50 years and you've got to use advanced mathematics and computers and whatnot, like that is crazy thinking because the person that created this didn't have all that technology. No, it's, it's that's it's a crazy, that's a crazy, scary, good cipher. Like this is the kind of things you, you know, you hear about and you, and people who study serial killers, there's a reason to study them because they're fascinating because oftentimes they're brilliant. Their minds, it, maybe. It's scary. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's very scary how they're able to do what they do. And there, there are people who are fascinated with it, and I just get creeped out by it. I've seen Zodiac. It's, that movie is creepy. It's a creepy AF. movie, yeah. Like, of course, it's got Jake Gyllenhaal in it. You know it's going to be creepy. That dude plays <laughs> only creepy movies. Right. Except for the new Spider-Man. You're like, oh, he's not totally creepy in this one. That's uh. the first. Was he though? Only kind of, only kind of creepy. Kind of creepy, semi creepy. Now, shout out to Nightcrawler. That movie is the sc scariest, creepiest. Oh my gosh, movie. Yeah. Jesse hasn't slept since that movie. Um. Oh. Anyway, she can't look at Jake Gyllenhaal ever again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, neither here nor there. Yeah. Um, crazy, just crazy. My parents grew up in uh, the Bay Area, so they are very, very aware mm. and familiar. and. Uh, you know, they were given instructions as children what to do and what not to do and when they could be out and that yeah. kind of stuff because they were they were real, real close. Yeah. Um, what else you got? So <laughs> I, I guess this is bad news. Um, OK, not for you and me, <laughs> I'll tell you why. In March of 2021, your Disney Plus subscription is going up. By one whole dollar from seven to eight. So not breaking the bank. No, no, not breaking the you bank. You got 86 million subscribers, though. You're like, hey, one dollar is pretty good yeah. to me. Uh, a one dollar raise means 86 million dollars more in my pocket every year. Oh, man. Every no, every month. Every month. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. It's stupid money. That's, it's, we can't even yeah. think about that. But so it's going up by a dollar and we are going to talk about why later. You know what? I, I would just will say like, as far as like the streaming platforms go, knowing that it's going from like seven to eight, like still that seems like a ridiculously good price for the content yeah. that's available there right now. Like Hulu's more expensive. Netflix is more expensive. Depending on how you look at Amazon prime and what you actually have that for, like yeah. maybe there. Like, I think the only thing that's maybe cheaper or maybe equivalent to it is like CBS all access. I don't remember what Apple plus charges. Maybe. It's I mean, they were giving it away for free. Or 
ninety nine a month. Right. We know it's on HBO Max. No, no, no. That's for the fifteen dollars a can't month. I understand that price. I don't understand. Uh, that. But oh, don't get us started. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let, we bend down that road. I I look at this as a business, and I go, okay, it's a smart business play. You're not breaking the bank. Disney intentionally went very low for the content they had to begin with. I think most people are going to be okay going, eh, I went from seven to eight. Not a big deal. Right. It's the lowest of their streaming yeah. costs. Yeah. Uh, for uh, almost everyone that's looking at it. For any of the big the streaming lowest. services, it's the lowest. Yeah. And I say it doesn't matter for you and me because we saw your deal. Right. So we don't got to worry about it for uh, two years. Yeah. That's the good news for us. And shout out to everybody else, D23 members who went ahead and got it early. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Good for us. Good anyway, for us. Not we'll, bad. We'll tell you why it's worth eight dollars. It's worth eight dollars now, but we'll tell you why even more. It's eight dollars very soon. Yes. All right, Matt. Here's the last thing I have. You remember how there was a little show called Game of Thrones? I do. It yes, was. I heard it about was. It, it about was it. based off a book series that was fairly popular as well. Sure, sure. Well, we we knew we knew a little while ago that there was going to be a spinoff, and it's called uh, House of House of the Dragon. It's basically going to talk about the Targaryens sometime before um, before you know where our book where the books start where the you know the show starts. It's basically going to be about kind of the Targaryen civil war and and kind of like you know like history. But anyway, uh they have cast Ready Player One's Olivia Cook, Doctor Who's Matt Smith and Truth Seekers Emma Darcy as it looks uh, from what it looks like to me, the, some of the main characters uh in this show. So what's interesting to me is that we're going forward there there was a book that George R R Martin wrote uh, called, I believe is called the house of the dragon. Um, or no, not, sorry, not house of the dragon fire and blood, uh, which is the, the Targaryens words for their house. Um, but there was, you know, there was this book, they're going to do this spinoff. I think that's kind of a good thing because that book was a single book. They can go back. They can tell stuff from that story and they can do a whole bunch of other stuff because now they don't have to like be kind of consigned to like trying to match this like epic book series da, da, da. they've got like yeah. a bunch of source material and then they can kind of tell their own stuff because there's a huge gap where there's not going to be books and there's not going to be things so it is exciting to see that something else is going forward i think this is something that i would definitely watch because i loved the game of thrones show up until the last season and i love the book series and it's more of this world of Westeros and it's going to go back into what used to be the ruling dynasty for a couple thousand years. And I think this is going to be back towards the beginning of that. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it's exciting news. I'm glad to see that. Glad to see that something's moving forward. That makes me uh, excited to maybe pay for that HBO Max subscription. Yeah, I'm not sure why Jesse asked me this. I've got nothing to say about I'll tell you right now, as you and as you've predicted, because I've I don't know anything right. about it. But since you mentioned that, uh, it will be on HBO Max. Yep. Yeah, okay. Interesting. And it will air on HBO, or is it just going to be a straight to HBO? I'm Max? sure. So HBO Max is basically like what HBO Go or HBO Now also used to do. So what will happen okay. is it'll probably air. Let's, let's pick a night. Let's say it airs on Sunday nights on HBO. Then it'll be available a few hours later on okay. HBO Max. Right, something like that. Okay. Yep. Interesting, interesting. Well, I have a feeling HBO Max is in my future. I don't know how often it will be in my future, but Jesse asked me today about HBO Max, and I was like, okay. I don't know what you want to watch on it, but I have right. a feeling that HBO Max is in my future. And I think uh, it's going to be in mine again, too. It just it might be spurts like it's going to be on it. Yeah. On again, off again. When we had cable. Week. Yeah. When we had a uh, when we had HBO, it would be like we'd watch Game of Thrones. And then like during those two months, it ran. 
we'd also watch a, a bunch of other HBO shows we wanted there to get caught up yeah, on yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then turn it back off again, and then wait a year, yep. turn it back on for like two, three months, and then do it. Yeah. Yeah. So it could be some of that for us. I got gotcha. you. I so, hear you. Loud and clear, man. Yeah. That's all I have for Rebel Intelligence. You're out, correct? I have one more thing. Ooh, what do you have, Matt? The Snyder Cut, because I know you want to talk more about it. Zack Snyder uh, wants to release it in theaters. I'm just going to give uh, a real quick one. And why? He's, he's like bragging about the fact that he thinks it's definitely going to be R-rated. Because Batman drops an F-bomb and there's people getting cut in half and he's like bragging. Look, you and I are not fans of this. We're not fans of Snyder's wanting i don't like the way he's okay. handling this i didn't like the way that it came across but that's what they want to do now apparently. my my question is why not why he's doing this why you're doing this to me I'm <laughs> just the news as it comes in. this came in right before we started I saw this. Oh. i'm just gonna mention it real quick because it is news and there are super friends who are gonna care but yeah there you go Take yep. it for what it's worth He's bragging about it, theatrical release potentially, and he's like, oh, it's so going to be R. And PAA hasn't seen it yet, but I got a feeling. And I was like, shut up, dude. Ugh. No one cares. But anyway, if you care, cool. Please listen. We don't hate you. We just hate this situation. Yep. Okay. Let's move on to better stuff. Let's let's do that. Ah, uh, gosh. Nearly triggered me, Matt. You nearly triggered me. Okay. Last week, last week, last week, last week, mm-hmm. we uh, we talked about the things in the movie Home Alone that we think we could endure, we could take on, and the things we couldn't. And we asked the super friends, what do you think you could do and take of the shenanigans, the hijinks, the pranks, the booby traps, and whatnot? So we got some answers. We're going to start over. Uh, like we always do with the email, fordofnerd at gmail.com. And we have Peter Christensen. He says, Dear nerds, we took a one night trip this past weekend to Leavenworth, a Bavarian themed tourist town in the mountains outside Seattle. We went to a reindeer farm, ate good food, and saw some spectacular Christmas lights. It was nice since so many of the Christmas events in Seattle are canceled this year. As the resident Marvel Netflix expert, the characters were introduced in this order. Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage during the first season of Jessica Jones, Punisher during the second season of Daredevil, Iron Fist. I looked it up and Iron Fist and Luke Cage passed the two years in October. Daredevil in November and Jessica Jones and the Punisher will pass in February of next year. That's good news for Disney fans. Wow. Uh, yeah, it's been enough time. Uh, he says, I have to admit, movie news is weird now because of how YouTubers take news or rumors and make a clickbait video overstating reality. I saw one yesterday that said Daredevil would be in Spider-Man 3 Spider-Verse, but it didn't sound right, so I skipped it. I just wait for the real press releases, previews, and the actual shows. And I gotta say, Peter, the Charlie Cox as daredevil in the uh in the spider-man yeah matt i don't remember if we talked about it last week or if we talked about it during the week but i'm seeing those heavy rumors all over the place yeah i i um i don't think we talked about it. i think it happened right after we recorded yeah i want to say oh my gosh i don't remember I don't remember either, but I'm Which I'm just gonna think we probably didn't talk about. I'm it. just gonna say right now, I'm seeing those rumors everywhere, and they're being picked yeah. up by a lot of reliable people. They're it's being happening. They're being they're being picked up by so many people that have picked up on other rumors that are coming true that we're gonna talk about here in a few minutes. That uh, yeah. I believe it's actually happening. So, yep, it makes me excited. Okay, he says. Yeah. On that note, I forgot two recastings. First. The Fantastic Four is kind of a wash, although playing Human Torch is the springboard to a career in the MCU. Second, Charlie Cox and the cast of the Daredevil Netflix show should, or should, it was a huge upgrade over Ben Affleck's Daredevil movie. It's not as bad as you remember, but it's nowhere as near as good as the show. I have to say that ranking the Home Alone traps is one of the best 
topics ever on this show. Oh. Before you started listing yours, I got PTSD flashbacks trying to remember and rank them. Matt, I know you and I talked about this, that we have a hard time watching some of this. Sounds like Peter did too. And I will say some other, some other super friends as well. So Peter says, here are the ones I would take glue and feathers. That's a give me yeah. tarantula. They're not dangerous, even though they're creepy. And then cutting the treehouse rope. It's probably the tamest of the falls. Yeah. I could not do torch to the head. I think I could deal with the hand branding better because I can see my hand and it wouldn't hurt to lay down and sleep. Also, I'm left-handed and his right hand was burned. <laughs> okay. I like that technicality there, Peter. That makes Perfect sense though. Now. Paint cans to the face. Yeah. This seems like the prank from the first movie that's most likely to kill you. I agree. I don't think how I don't know how you live past that. And then his last one, nail through the foot and falling backwards. This might not be the most dangerous, but it's the one that makes me wince and clench the hardest like I'm doing right now. Just thinking about it. <laughs> oh, yes. Honorable mentions to all the falls. I'm a big boy and big boys fall hard. Also, the glass ornaments are an underrated horror. Your oh, feet yeah. have so many tendons and muscles that interact in a complex way. And you're talking about fishing out dozens or hundreds of pieces of shrapnel before you get to start healing. It's not the same level of sadism, but if you want to see a bad guy get hurt and humiliated, I recommend Undercover Blues, where Dennis Quaid and Kathleen Turner torment Stanley Tucci from beginning to end. Cheers, Peter Christensen. Thanks, Peter. Peter, thank you for your email. We appreciate it. Uh, yes. Let's go over to Facebook, facebook.com slash Ford of Nerd. We've got Robert Daryl Good Jr. He says... Could take tarantula. Couldn't blowtorch. And blowtorch is popular. Dude. Give me the blowtorch. Let it melt oh. my skull. I'm uh, in. No. I'm in. No way. Oh, no. All right. Let's go over to, to Twitter at uh, on Twitter at Ford of Nerd. We've got Patrick Novacell at Hollywood Bones. He says, I love this question. Could take feathers to the face. Yep. Could not take flamethrower to the head. Oh, come could on, bunch of wimps. He says could not take honorable mentions. Iron to the face, hot doorknob, and nail in the foot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Irish Joe 13 at Boston Joe 13. The one I can't take is that nail sticking up on the stairs. It freaks me out. The one I probably could take is the hot knob. I wouldn't have kept my hand on that long. And there's snow right there. No, the rules are you have to do exactly uh, what's shown in the movie. The hot knob is terrible. Burnt head is obviously awful. And I I would not want that. Uh, however, hmm. I don't know. You know, uh, I, I agree with everybody saying the nail in the foot. I don't, oh, gosh. I, I get it. Yes. I get it. So bad. I would still take that one. Like when I watch it, it <sighs> looks the worst and it makes me feel really, really super mm. uncomfortable, but I'd rather have that than most of the other ones because I, I can recover from that pretty easily. I've, I've stepped on a nail before where it's barely, and I mean, barely gone uh, into my foot this when it happened. and I'm, I'm telling I you, I get PTSD every time I watch that. Just it's, it's, it's kind of not comfortable to happen. Okay. <sighs> we can agree on, it. Uh, you know, Matt, this week, something that, that happened uh, a streamer friend of ours uh, cupcake tattooed she was streaming for the star i believe it's called the starlight charity she was raising a bunch of money and she decided to start doing some of the bean boozled beans mm. and, and like she'd take one of them was like oh no just like mm. like it just like physically made me feel ill like i was getting like ptsd just watching her eat a single bean and then she crossed the threshold and she took like all the beans and put them in her mouth and started chewing them. And like, I, like I, I had so much PTSD. I was so triggered. Like I had to like turn her volume down and put it down. I feel that same way. Every time I watch that dang nail go through the foot in home alone, like I just, I cringe. I just like, 
I hold my yeah. my arms to my chest and I'm like, oh no, please don't do it, Marv. Don't do it. Every single time. It happens. I talk to the TV. I'm like, no, idiot, stop. Like, look, it's a movie. Look, look. It, it's gonna, it's gonna happen. Like, it's not gonna change. But I'm talking to it like it's going to. Anyway, uh, super friends, thank you for the answers. I'm glad that so many of you agree with me on this. That the blowtorch is horrible, and that the nail through the foot is horrible, and that the hot knob is is bad, but doable. Like, that's doable. <laughs> Um, I'm glad that like my psychosis matches all of yours and we all agree that some of these things are just hot garbage and I would never want to endure them. Mm. Oh, oh, Matt, how, how can the super right now, what can the super friends do to help us get over our PTSD from watching this horror show of a Christmas movie? Watch the second one. Oh, um, no. <laughs> First one was bad. Watch Come the back one. for more. You definitely die in the second. Oh. Um, <laughs> anyway, other than what you always do, like, comment, subscribe. All the whole smell. Just get get the fort of nerd in your brain. Um, and then we love interacting. Continue to comment. And we will read your answers live if you listen live and you can see our visceral reactions to your comments yep. sometimes positive sometimes like that is that's a hot oh. take that i agree with yeah um and then a little something extra we're getting close to christmas for what we celebrate However, it is the holiday season for whatever holiday you choose to celebrate. And uh, in the spirit of all of those holidays, do something kind for a neighbor. Mm. Bake some cookies. This is a very popular and very simple thing to do. And it's COVID appropriate. Sanitize, I guess. I want drop them off at the house. I want Christmas cookies now, and I don't have them. Thanks a lot for that. Well, you know, <laughs> if you were our neighbor, you might get some. Well, um, but more the, all the reason for me to like move that. down there. That's right. Come to Texas, man. Um, anyway, thank you for all you do. Thank you for supporting and uh, do it without you. So thank you, Matt. Now we get to what we've wanted to talk about this whole episode, what we've wanted to talk about for days. And admittedly, I didn't even look at any of this for a few days because of all the craziness that was going on in my life. But the old uh, D23 investor call happened this last week. Sometimes there's a few things to talk about when that happens. Other times there's a few more things. And then there was this l this time in 2020, which literally was an explosion of awesomeness. Oh my gosh. Where do you want to start in talking about this stuff? This is tough because there's so much because Spencer and I are not just like Marvel Star Wars fans. Like many of you, we're just Disney fans. Yeah. And there's so much to talk about. So let's do this. Let's each pick like one or two things that are not related to Marvel and Star Wars that excited us about what was announced. Because I have a feeling with the Marvel and Star Wars, we're going to. Um, so I don't know. What do you think? How does that sound? Sure. All right. So I'll start. Okay. So easy. Number one for me what well there's a lot of great things and i may do some quick hitters because there's so many good things, but i want to talk about the mighty ducks trailer we got a trailer for the mighty ducks game changer airing in 2021 bringing back my main man gordon bombay emilio estevez mm. whom i haven't seen in such a long time and to see him on screen i just went i feel like complete and this is so good and lauren graham is in it which is awesome and she's really funny and plays like the perfect it it looks great so that's one that i was just like over the moon excited for because i knew that they had filmed it for but we hadn't seen it okay and then 
Uh, I'm going to go with my surprise of the night, which was a show called Big Shot. And this is a show about girl power and a girls basketball team, which is something I'm not interested in. I mean, I'm not really a girl in those kind of things from Disney. It sounded like something that I wouldn't want to watch. Okay. And then they showed the trailer, and it looks amazing. Because, and now we mentioned this a long time ago, Spencer, I don't know if you remember this. Deimos was cast as this coach. Who'd oh, been, yeah. Who'd coached elsewhere and coached men's basketball ball and was kind of big time and then he has to go down and he coaches school basketball team the show looks way different than i thought it's not like a you know tv g raw it looks like a real show that is important to watch like emotional and fun and it has yvette nicole brown in it like shout mm -hmm. out to yvette nicole brown i was that that one makes me just giddy with glee and joy as well just to see um so those are my two like really big excitement things and then just a quick shout out to the confirmation that willow is happening with right. warwick davis and then a quick shout out to what's always sunny getting four that was confirmed by uh fx slash hulu um that night so my thing that wasn't like Marvel Star Wars that I'm actually kind of interested in is that they're bringing Alien, the Ridley Scott movie franchise yeah. to FX as a television series. And I went, OK, this could be interesting. Like I've liked those movies and that seems kind of cool. You know, I don't like horror, but like I feel like the first Alien movie was less horror and more suspense. Right. And so that's something that I was kind of like, okay, yeah, I could, yeah. I could, uh, I could do that. I could look at that. That seems, uh, interesting to me. Like I would, I would want to take a look at that and see, uh, what that's all kind of about. Um, I also like the fact that, uh, they're developing a Percy Jackson and the Olympians, um, oh, yeah. series. Um, I I've never read those books. I recently watched those movies um, because some people said like they're kind of okay. I love, I just love like the Greek and Roman mythology stuff a lot, yeah. like a lot, a lot, a lot. And so knowing that they're doing that, that was kind of a really interesting thing for me. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of on board with that. I didn't really care about hearing about beating the beast or maybe Swiss family Robinson. Like that no. was just like, like it's not it's not bad, um, but that was kind of cool. But uh, a shout out to Limitless with Chris Hemsworth, um, which yeah. is going to be a National Geographic uh, title. And then also the Welcome to Earth series with Will Smith. Um, to me, this looks like more of like the same, like real high quality content that National Geographic has been putting out lately. Um or we've been seeing like, I don't know, like the elephants in the Savannah. I don't remember what it's called. Maybe it was just called elephants. Um, but like some of the stuff like we've been watching with our kids and it's interesting and it's exciting, but it's also very educational. And the boys are like, yeah, dad, you remember when we saw the elephants in the Savannah and they had to cross the river because it was the time when like the floods were going to be coming. So they had to move then so they could get to the island. I'm like, I do remember that. They're like, yeah, that was cool. I'm like, yeah, that was cool. So like we we kind of dig some of that stuff. So like I'm really kind of digging the fact that some of these National Geographic things and that it's going to have, you know, Will Smith and maybe Will Smith's just maybe he's in this and he's walking around right. and he's doing stuff or maybe he's just, you know, narrating it. I don't know. Um, but some of that stuff to me is is really kind of a uh, freaking amazing. And like, I just want to get more of that. Um so yeah, I think that the theme that I was that I picked up on was they are swing content. I mean, there's there's like shows that they'd announced uh -huh. and then we got to see them and they looked amazing. And then there's things where it's like, OK, we're bringing in major players and stars. Yeah, like 
like major. Yep. I mean, the fact you get Will Smith and Chris Hemsworth to do National Geographic stuff for Disney Plus, then they announce Hocus Pocus two, and you're like, boy, <laughs> get that Midler and the crew back together. That's a, that, that is a big get. I'm serious. That you Bette Midler, it. that's the high water mark right there. That's a that's a big get. But like the what shocked me was stuff like uh, the reboot of Three Men in a getting Zac Efron to lead the cast. Like that's a huge star and a fun movie that people yeah. uh, under my age are very unfamiliar. With. Yeah, sure. Even Jesse not familiar with that. And that's a fun thing to reboot that you could like totally, cause the world has changed since that. There's just so many fun things, sister act coming back, uh, getting freaking Whoopi Goldberg to sign back on Tom Hanks being in a Pinocchio movie. That's a Disney plus exclusive. Like, they went for it really big. Yeah. Um, and that's just, I mean, we're just brushing on some of the stuff that they talked about. And the last thing I'll say before um, we we move on is just kind of the stuff. I mean, the fact that we're getting a Baymax, a Zootopia, a, to- a Tiana, and a Moana series. Yeah. And then this new awesome, like, Pan-African series, Iwaju which is like so cool, so great for a new look and What did you about it? What did you um, think the, about the uh the Lightyear announcement? This, that was my next thing was I was like peeing my pants out of excitement. I think that's a good idea. It's brilliant. I cannot wait. And you know, here it was talk about getting with the big stars again. Mm-hmm. This isn't for Disney Plus. Um this is, you know, just a Pixar regular release, but right. man, Chris Evans voicing. I mean, that's uh, just, just cool. Well, I think it's a smart idea to say like, we've kind of done enough in the toy story world with the toys and the characters. Yeah. So let's yeah. actually tell a story about a real human that they base the toy off of. And, right. and it's still going to be able to give us probably some of the Buzz Lightyear that we know with some of the catchphrases, because obviously, yeah, yeah, yeah. like obviously, if, the, if all the toys say that, they got it from somewhere. Um, right. But it can also be kind of like a space exploration movie, which, you know, I'm a sucker for, but it's animated and it's Pixar. Like I, gosh, I was all over that. I heard that. And I was like, yeah. ooh, daddy like. There's just, there's so much and we can't cover it all. That's what we kind of, We'll, we'll just shoot right over and let's talk. What do you want to talk first, Marvel or Lucas? Lucas. Let's go okay, to Lucasfilm. Lucasfilm, to get you know some of the interesting... I already mentioned Willow, right? Yep. So Willow's getting, getting its own series. Indiana Jones and movie. And then Indiana Jones. And what I thought was good is like they're like very clear. This is the end. <laughs> right. This is it. Indiana yep. Jones 5 is the end of Indiana Jones. We're not rebooting it casting it it's harrison ford he's coming back this is it yeah and those are kind of the extra things from lucasfilm and then i'm trying to remember i believe they what else did they mention that wasn't star wars uh something called children of blood and bone thank you yeah, yeah written and directed by taika whitey yep um really popular book Really, really popular book. That's I don't be I don't know it at all. Feature film, but it's interesting to see Lucasfilm doing something different, something completely out of you know their typical mm. wheelhouse. They're not you know not a lot of new original stuff coming from Luc- new well, properties. Well, let's get to the stuff that we want to talk about here. Let's do it. So the small things first. Uh, they're gonna do a follow up series to the Clone Wars called The Bad Batch. Now, I intentionally watched just the trailer, but didn't go too deep in it because I just started watching The Clone Wars now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But to me, what this seems like is they've done a real good job with The Clone Wars, but now they're going to pick up at, like, the tail end of The Clone Wars into the formation of the Empire, and now we're going to see some of these clones transition into being on the empire side and you know being part of that i think that's interesting because obviously like you know if if you watch the movies you kind of know that like they didn't just like 
destroy all these clones. Now we know like in the Star Wars movies, like the original movies, well, I guess we, I say we, you and I know this, but like at that point, like there was no new clones. They hadn't been cloning for decades at that point. Yeah. So most of the stormtroopers are conscripts, uh, you know, or conscripted individuals. They're conscripts. They've been taken from their home world and forced mm-hmm. into becoming part of the, you know, the empire, the, the machine that is the military industrial complex of the universe. Right. So, but at the end of the clone wars though, there's gotta be a place for all those clones to go. So it'll be interesting to see them transition into the empire. And are we going to have some of our favorites that are still there that are going to, you know, fight against, are we going to see this group that they're calling the bad batch? Maybe some of the last clones that were made were, ones that were going to be more sympathetic to working for the empire and for the emperor. Right. It looked cool, but I I had to like kind of like kid glove, like be very careful with it because I don't want to do anything that would spoil the seven season ride I'm in for right now on Clone Wars. Yeah, this looks great. And the, it it looked really, really cool. That's all I, I don't know a lot. Right. relatively blind for that show because i do want to watch it mm. and if that means i gotta watch clone wars i guess i gotta watch clone wars i don't know but the bad batch looked cool for yeah. sure yep for sure did look good all right live action spinoffs matt all right let's let's talk live action spinoffs <laughs> oh um, whoo First, I want to give a shout out to something that I was really excited about. We already knew the Obi Wan Kenobi series was coming. Yep. Um, rumors that I started seeing last week were that it was going to start filming like really soon, and those rumors turned out to be really true. Right. Yeah. So they're filming really soon, like very beginning of 2020. Um, but what I was excited about was really it's kind of a two parter. First. Uh, Kathleen Kennedy, who's an awful presenter, awful, not yeah. excited about Lucasfilm at all. I mean, compared to Kevin Feige, like, get off oh, the stage. Right. N- enough crapping. Give us Filoni. Give us Filoni. Like yeah. Passion. Yeah. Anyway, um, Hayden Christensen coming back and reviving his role as Darth Vader. Yeah. Is really exciting yeah. for Star Wars fans. I know that he gets crapped on a lot. Blah, blah, blah. For me, I'm excited about it. As I've grown, I've come to appreciate the prequels, especially seeing the sequels. Um, and the fact that she mentions that this will culminate potentially into the rematch of the century makes me go, wow, there's something we definitely don't know Yeah, that's going to happen. Yep. And so that made me really, and really excited. What's interesting, too, is like this is going to take place 10 years after uh revenge of the uh yeah. the sith so that means that like luke skywalker is about 10 years old at this time yep so it's kind of like okay i've got the feeling that ben kenobi is not much on tatooine during this time period that maybe when this series wraps up that's when he decides he needs to fully spend his time on tatooine right. um but when they said rematch of the century i went so is this going to then feed back into a new hope when he's like, you know, it's been a long time, you know, like that, because then it would have been like eight years since they would have yeah. seen each other last or had any interaction potentially. Right, right. So yeah, it just some little teases, just enough yeah. to get me excited. And look, they're casting Hayden Christensen for a reason, which means we're going to see out his helmet on at some points. You don't cast gotta be, yeah. Aiden Christensen in a Darth Vader suit. There's no need to make an exciting announcement for Star Wars fans. He's going to, at some point, take his mask off, and it'll be interesting to see because we don't we don't know a ton about yeah. the suit, why it works the way it works, and why. I mean, the only time we see him without his helmet on is very briefly in the eggshell, and then right. after he's dying. 
And so it'll be interesting to see Hayden Christensen, like all burnt. Like I am, I, I can't stop because I get way too excited. <laughs> and I, my fanboy goes like yeah. all the way too forward. And if he's on Tatooine, I mean, talk about there's, there are fan service opportunities in the show and I'm there for it. Yep. The other thing that they announced that was brief before we get to the other bigger ones, the Lando Oh, gosh. live action. Oh, that's like number one excitement for me. Oh, just the logo. I was like, oh, you got the vibe exactly the way I want that. Like 70s, like somewhat like almost like, yeah, that 70s yeah. vibe of like cool Lando is. Oh. Now, here's the thing. They didn't say anything about the casting. So is yeah, it is but... it is it going to be Billy D. Williams or are we going to get Donald Glover? I, we're getting Donald Glover. I think we're going to get both. Opinion. I God, think that would be amazing too. I think we're going to get Billy D. Williams in each episode talking, telling a story, telling a story and talking mm-hmm. back. And he was like, let, let me tell you, you pirate about the time oh, that man. I took over the Tabana gas mine. And then all of a sudden it's going to be young Donald Glover. And it's going to be a whole episode. Like, I don't know why, but like, that's how I imagine this. I'm like, Cause then they could do old Lando and young Lando and have them both in there. Ooh, makes me excited. Again, this is this is fantastic news. Oh. Um, because look, and, and I'm still not completely satisfied because so it does as its film, and I am so pissed at Lucasfilm for scheduling it the way that it was scheduled because that movie is so good. And Lando was so good in that. I'm glad that he's getting his own series. But you don't do a Lando Calrissian series either or both of those actors. You don't recast Donald Glover. You don't, you don't get a different young one. You just can't do that. You can't rewrite history, in my opinion. And the fact that it's a limited series like Obi-Wan is makes me think these are the big actors. They're swinging for the fences. They're going to do it right. They're going to do it big. They're going to do it once. We're not getting multiple seasons of Donald Glover because Donald Glover is the planet yeah enough time to do star wars every year same with ewan mcgregor maybe you know does have time nowadays but he didn't used to so it'll be interesting to see kind of i don't know yeah it'll be interesting so that's that's Uh, uh, okay uh the next thing i want to talk about with the live action stuff matt yeah is the show that they announced called rangers of the new republic yes now we have known and it's been heavily talked about that they've talked about wanting to do a Cara Dune spinoff because right. her, her character has been popular and mm-hmm. we can, this is how we can get to see more of the new Republic in this Mando area. Okay. Yes. And yep. I, I'm all for that. It's interesting though, that they changed the name to Rangers of the what are they called Rangers of the New Republic, and I'll yeah. tell you why because the actress Gina Carano has made some statements and some political things, and Marvel and Disney are very very cautious about the face that they put on yes. everything, right? And yep. for some reason, I have this feeling that by calling it Rangers of the New Republic, and we've seen some of these other you know like. X wing fighter pilots and whatnot that if there's a falling out, if there's an issue, if some of these other things go on, they can tell us, they can tell a a show and do a series without her. And it would be a lot harder if they called it Cara Dune Ranger of the new Republic. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't read into it that much. Oh really? (laughs) I also don't know what she said. I also yeah, so I'm totally out of the loop on that. I have no idea about anything that is kind of going on with her and her personal opinions and lives or life. And typically I hate when actors get, you know, quote, canceled because of something they've said. I don't I don't love yeah. that, especially if it's not like a a necessarily, you know, violent or her anyway, whatever. Yeah. Long story short, I didn't read that much into it. I just got excited. I knew what it was about. I know that it's during the Mando time frame. Right. They're creating a Mando verse of sorts. Um, yeah. which is smart because it's it's successful. Um so there's no reason that they shouldn't. 
And this gives us opportunity to look, I mean, we already know what it's going to give us an opportunity to do. It's going to give us an opportunity to see what it's like to be in the new Republic right. to where yep. they're in charge. We've never seen this before. Yeah. When the good guys are in charge and we've seen just bits and pieces in Mando and we know that this and the series we're going to talk about next, they culminate in crossover. Yes. Into a kind of a massive event yes. or events or series, whatever that we're going to see. And so we know we're going to see more of Cara Dune and what she's been up to, and perhaps a little more with her with her buddy, not buddy, the, but basically the guy that recruited her would be my expectation. Mm, um, it could be. And uh, it's it's pretty, this is exciting to me. Yeah. I, I'm hopeful. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'm not sold as her being like a lead yet. Like yeah. she's interesting and she's a decent actress. I mean, I've never complained about the way she acts, but I'm also not like, oh my gosh, like I need a series of her. So it'll be interesting to see who they put around her, uh, at least for me, because I'm just not sold on her being like. Yeah, I know what you're saying. A show. Now I'll tell you someone who can lead a show who I have full faith and confidence in, and it's going to be heavily involved with our boys Dave Filoni and John Favreau. Hello, Ahsoka Tano with a show called Ahsoka. Yeah. Oh my goodness, we knew that this was probably going to be a thing, but the fact we've only seen her in one episode of The Mando, and it was an amazing episode. And there was a huge name drop in that episode leads me to believe that this series is going to pick up the threads of where she was at the end of Star Wars Rebels. It's going to pick up some of those characters from Star Wars Rebels, and it's going to continue in this world post Return of the Jedi. She's going to have the ability to you pop in and out maybe through the other shows and crossover. Like maybe our Mandalorian Din Djarin shows up in an episode of Ahsoka. Maybe we see, you know, the, the Rangers of the new Republic. I was just like, I, I love yeah. this. And I love that we're going to get a, a Jedi story in this yes. kind of post return of the Jedi world. That's not Luke Skywalker. And it, can be its own thing and oh just like it that that one like even though i kind of knew it was coming like the possibilities yeah, the possibilities for me matt that's what's got me the most excited about this yeah it's the story of rebels that gets mm -hmm. me most excited she we don't know much about her um outside of the clone wars which this is not going to take place during that time it's going to play it, it look it, yeah. it takes place exactly as you said it's going to deal with the characters that we're familiar with and that's why um i've had to reassess what my expectations are for the mandalorian because grand admiral thrawn is probably i mean he will show up in all of these shows they're going to cross yeah. over it's going to be a thing like all these all these characters are he's going the to be known. he's going to be the big big bad he is he has to be because yeah. he's a big bad and he's oh awesome. yeah and we, i mean we'll see him in all these things but i was thinking oh immediately we're going to see him in mando but i think we're going to get ahsoka that show is going to give us more on that storyline and yeah. ezra and um can, kind of the ghost okay, crew and what they can you outside. imagine a live action Harrison Dula, Zeb, Ezra Bridger, Grand Admiral Thrawn, like like all of a sudden it's like Ahsoka Tano. Okay, this is why like fans of Clone Wars, fans of Rebels are so excited to see Ahsoka Tano in the Mando this season, was because this has been an only animated character that we've only right. seen an animated in live action and they did it well very well and so yeah. if they can do that like there's just so many possibilities of what could happen and i'm i'm down i'm, I'm here for it like get oh, yeah. it bring it let's go totally Ugh. totally down uh they're doing they're smart they're finally figuring out that Dave Filoni and John Favreau know what they're doing let yep. them run their project in their star wars time period and let's just roll. Yep. 
let the cameras roll, man. And they got that technology down. I mean, uh, and they didn't tell us a lot of information, not a lot of release date information for Star Wars at all. Um, nope. However, we did. they did say that one of these shows would be premiering at Christmas. Of That's next true. Year. That is true. They so didn't say which one. No. Right. We know we're getting Mando next year also, as usual. Yep. Um, I would expect Mando to air even earlier and for this to be there. And we'll talk about kind of their release windows right now. Or as we talk about Marvel, how they've spread things out. We'll see that similar with Star Wars as those shows come around. But um, I think we'll see Mando earlier and then we'll see one of these shows come out. All right. The Acolyte. What did you think of that? We didn't get a lot of information, but this has me probably the most excited in terms of possibilities. Yep. Um, I'm hopeful that we get some <laughs> some real dark stuff. Like <clears throat> that's basically how they introduced it. Mm -hmm. This is kind of the perhaps maybe a birthplace of the Sith and their rise to power and their greed and where that comes from and why it exists and who really chased it, you know, like yeah, where the information and the power originated. Cause you know that this is at the end of the high Republic. So we're talking a long time ago from what we're familiar with right in the star Wars universe. Um, I don't know. Potentially, there's rumors, right, where people are saying maybe it's Darth Plagueis, and we get a little information on him, or maybe even his master and where he learned it. And that I mean, yeah. So, so we'll yeah. see. This to me has a lot of potential because it's a, it's a new time period. It's about the dark side, which we just don't get a lot of information on the dark side. Um, uh, and the logo looks cool. So I'm yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, th so I, I think this looks good. I like the idea of going back to the, 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 you know, the high Republic and they say it's the last days of the high Republic era, but we also right. know that there's a movie in the works. that's going to go back in time. It's supposed to be a couple hundred years set before the clone wars and kind of during this era of the high Republic. So like we know we're going to get some stuff in that time frame. So like this makes sense to me. Um, they also did talk about how, uh, Taika Waititi is going to get yeah. a a movie in the franchise. And all they said was it's going to be fresh, unique, and unexpected. And that was kind of it. And I was like, well, that's a teaser and a half, I guess. I guess. But, Matt, I, yeah. I, I, this next thing. Like, when they said that they're going to do a Star Wars movie and it's going to be called Rogue Squadron. And it's going to be about the story of the legendary fighter pilot team led by Luke Skywalker and Wedge Antilles. And I watched the the trailer with Patty Jenkins, you know, the director of Wonder Woman. She talked about her dad being a fighter yeah. pilot. And then she puts on the thing and puts on the helmet. I was like, OK, kind of kind of goofy. And then she starts walking towards the distance. And what I thought at first was just another fighter jet. And then I realized, oh, that's an <laughs> X-Wing. That's an, OK. I know like what they're trying to do and I don't want to be like, ah, they got me though. These do. They totally got me. I loved, loved, loved a book series called rogue squadron by, I think it was Michael Stackpole. And there was a whole bunch of these books. Like there was like a crazy amount of these books. I want to say like nine, 10, 11, 12. Wow. They, they introduced a character called Corin Horn, who ended up becoming a Jedi in this series. Like they, they had like not only like good dog fights in this book, but they had like, like things that were investigated. So it was more of like, it was more of like they were trying to solve crimes and figure things out. Like, you know, what happened to these shipyards over here? Or what happened with this base or this new prototype that they yeah. just ran up against, you know, in space that just was kicking their trash. And it talks about like the camaraderie between them and like how this group of fighter pilots became like the elite fighter pilot unit inside of the rebellion inside of the new Republic. Mm. I saw that and I went, Oh yeah. Yeah. Like now I've also played like those X wing uh, fighter pilot games back in the day. Right. Mm -hmm. And those were always good. Those were fun. But 
if they, man, if they bring back any of the stories by Michael Stackpole, bring back any of that, bring back some of those characters, I'll just be over the moon. It's kind of like when they did that with Grand Admiral Thrawn, right? Like when they said that all the old extended universe stuff is done, it's legends, it's yeah. not canon anymore. And then they brought back Thrawn. I was like, ooh, because he was a huge part in some of that. If they bring back Rogue Squadron and they start bringing some of these stories, like they found ways to go back and take characters and take some stories and bring them in and make them canon, even though like the books that that they're using as source material are, are not canon. Um, right. So I'm down for this. I don't know how you felt, but like I read like all those books. So like I was just, you know, the 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 fanboy inside of me just I couldn't contain it. Yeah, I get that, man. I get that. Uh, I was stoked when I heard Patty Jenkins. Yep. And I was disappointed when I heard what it was about. Uh, I'll be honest. Uh. I, I here's here's my thing with Star Wars. Like, where's the next trilogy? Like, I want a Jedi story. I I, I that's what I want. I get I that. Like, I get story. that. But or, or I want I want I want that High Republic trilogy that they're talking about. I I want. Right. Like Rogue Squadron, that's great. I, I guess like a, a Star Wars story. Look, look at Rogue Squadron three though. If it was like twenty twenty two, I'm like, okay, good. Now we're starting rolling with the movies, but we're talking twenty twenty three, Christmas. We're talking three years from now. We're gonna yeah. get Rogue Squadron. I don't know. Think about it like it in the terms of Rogue well. One. Like think about it like Rogue One. Like Rogue One was this great movie that told a great story that was just kind of right. standalone. Like. This could be that it could be a great Star Wars story. That's a standalone or it, it could be potentially a trilogy. It, it could grow to that. I don't, I don't know. I don't think it would, but you I never just, know. I just wanted, here's for me, what was notably missing. And that, that's the last thing from Lucasfilm. For me, what was notably missing was any news on a trilogy. Mm hmm. And then any news on Taika Waititi's movie. We already knew he was doing a movie. Uh, they gave us literally nothing. And then the other thing is Ryan Johnson's trilogy, which I'm guessing is canceled. Probably. There's absolutely no information on the future of Star Wars film outside of we're getting a movie called Rogue Squadron. And I'm not like crapping on it per se, but I think yeah. a lot of Star Wars fans that I've talked to since this information came to light was that's great but where's like where's the story taking us next i you know? think we'll i think disney's playing actually a really smart game here i think by not talking about the trilogies cuz let's be honest the the sequel trilogy divided the fan base pretty harshly it mm -hmm. it it wasn't what they wanted it to be like it Force Awakens started out strong. Last Jedi got really divisive amongst the fan base and caused a lot of problems. And then the last one, Rise of Skywalker, just like, if you thought Last Jedi was Get bad, ooh. So what, I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to say, like, look, we've got Mando over here. We're going to do Rangers of the New Republic. we got Ahsoka. we got Lando. We've got Obi-Wan. Right. We're going to do a, a Taika Waititi standalone movie. We're going to do Rogue Squadron. So, like, we're going to get some of these movies. we got a bunch of like TV stuff. I think they're trying to build back good faith amongst the diehard Star Wars crowd and then sure. say like, let's just like back off. Let's, you know, we're still going to go forward, but let's back off on talks of trilogy stuff. Let's get a lot of good content so that people's most recent memories are man, baby Yoda, that Grogu, he's so cute. And they're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And now you're not going to see this when we drop in a trilogy set in the high Republic era. And you weren't expecting mm -hmm. this. Here you go. And it's amazing. Cause we're going to be thinking, ah, oh, you know, all this other stuff. I think that's, I think that's what they're doing. And I think it's a smart play. Yeah. I don't disagree with that. I just think, I think that they have built back most of the good faith with the Mandalorian. And I, I if you listen to the Sidecacks, Sidecacks, shout out to the Sidecack episode. <laughs> the Sidecack! For Mandalorian. The Mandalorian for me is top tier Star Wars. Like, oh yeah. Uh, it's, it's, oh amazing. yeah. 
amazing, like better than many of the Star Wars movies or on par storytelling with those movies. For me, and I am a harsh critic of particularly The Rise of Skywalker Mm. being one of the most disappointing experiences of anything that I've been a part of. And they've already got me back. I'm roped in. I'm all in on Star Wars. See, I anyway, me, I think see. I think I'm I'm good right now with the TV series content that are producing. Yeah, I've got to see a good movie because, in honestly, in my opinion, uh, Rogue One was amazing. Force Awakens was good, but very derivative of A New Hope. Uh-huh. And mm-hmm. then you had two movies plus the Han Solo movie. For me, there was three movies that they did, you know, boom, boom, boom. The last three we saw right, that weren't good for me. And I'm like, three movies in a row? Like, you didn't like Solo? Not really. Like, it wasn't bad. Really? Like, it's, I'm not going to, I'm not going to dump on it like I will with The Last Jedi and then the right. hot mess that Rise of Skywalker was. But I, mm-hmm. I kind of looked at it and I was like, it, it had opportunities to be something better. And it just kept falling short of that mark. Like, on the whole, if you just were to watch just that movie and nothing else existed, I would have been like, this is actually a pretty cool movie. But with everything else that does exist, like you can't look at it in a vacuum. I kind of go, it just not quite there. So for me, it was like kind of a, eh, and then kind of a what? And then a, you, are you freaking kidding me? Right, right, right. I need to see a movie that makes me like, yes, yes. Lucasfilm knows how to do a movie again. Let's get mm-hmm. for me. I think they got to get back to that. So bring on Taika Waititi's movie. Bring yeah, yeah, yeah. bring on Rogue Squadron. Like, give me a good movie or two. Let's completely erase that bad taste of Rise of Skywalker out of the mouth. Then drop a trilogy. That's where I'm at yeah. on this. I'm fine with that. I just would have liked information. Yep, oh, I get it. I don't need announcements. Just tell me it's coming <laughs> or that you hear us. That's all. Anyway, enough. Marvel, enough of, uh, Marvel, 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 Marvel. Because we got a lot to talk about over here too. Good freaking. What do you What do you want to start with? What do you want to talk about? Let's just go in order. I mean, WandaVision drops. Ooh, that trailer is so good. So good. Because it does exactly what I wanted it to do, which was tell me nothing but make me excited. It it did exactly what I want a trailer to do. I was like, it was it was crazy. It started out so lighthearted. And it got really creepy and dark. And I was like, at first, if you recall, I said that I thought that this was going to take place maybe inside of vision's head as like, as like he was basically dying as, you know, Wanda pulls the, the mind stone and crushes it. Right. However, the more I watch this trailer, I actually think that this is inside her head. And I mean, cause I mean, I, I feel like that's almost pretty clear. Cause you hear the, like, what are you doing to her? Blah, blah, blah. Like some like the little voiceover. Yes. So I think that this is, I don't know if it's in something that's already established or not, but like she's going through some sort of trauma or she has been, she's being traumatized at some moment. And like, this is some sort of like defense mechanism that she's using to like cope with what's going on around her or something. It mm-hmm. looks interesting. It looks fun. It looks like it could be funny, but yet also like it's going to go one way and then it's going to take a hard turn, I think. Yeah. And I'm here for that. Like I'm here for that kind of storytelling. This looks awesome. I guess it takes place just before uh, Avengers Infinity War. Okay. That's that's my guess. And I don't know what happened because we don't know. At the time. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. What do you think about Falcon and the winter soldier from what, from what you saw? I, that's how I feel. I was just like, okay, like I'll watch it. I'll watch it. It looks like, I like it. I'll watch it. It looks fine. It It looks, looks, yeah. Isn't that weird? Like I was expecting like, like, Oh yeah. But I was like, it looks fine. I'll watch it. But like nothing that really made me like, Ooh, like, yeah, exactly. They're going to have to, yeah, they'll have to do, I mean, they will do something. It's it's Kevin Feige and Marvel, and, and it will be an excellent show. Um, but those two characters aren't, like, the most charismatic, interesting characters. Yeah. 
you know, when you, then you, they don't, they don't really have good powers. I'll just say it, you know, like, at least in WandaVision, you're like, oh yeah, these two have like epic powers. And then you're like, oh, I think but what's good is we're getting it really soon. Yeah, that's I true. Mean, that's what we're going to, that's going to be what the consistent messages from Marvel is. Yeah. We announced all these shows last year, if you recall, and they're coming out now. Dude, they're dropping like what? Five shows in this next five year? Five live action. <sighs> Marvel oh, shows. we'll talk about so them. good. I mean, in, in order here, and yeah, the next one would be Falcon Winter Soldier, like March. Yeah, I think it's March. March, I think. Like, this is. It looks good. Something great. The next one they showed, though. For, oh man. For me, I think this is probably the one I'm most excited for. Oh yeah, easy. I mean, oh gosh, Tom Hiddleston. Ooh, like he can act that boy. I'm talking about Loki. Uh, they played this trailer. I don't know what's going on. I mean, obviously he gets the the space stone, right? And he, you know, the Tesseract and he's zoinks. He's out, right? But then like, it looks like he's in some sort of like, I don't alternate reality somewhere in the multiverse. Yes. And yes. it almost kind of was like, He's working, it kind of reminded me of the Umbrella Academy a little bit. Like, is he working for some sort of agency in order to, like, buy right. his way back into something or avoid something or whatever? But Owen Wilson in this thing looked really good. I I mean, I wasn't uh, expecting... That was a shock. I wasn't expecting that. Um, But, like, he just... Oh, gosh. Like, it just looks so freaking good. I don't know anything yeah. about this. It May 2021. So it's like, I think we're going to be starting off in January, then March, then like, I think it's literally gonna be like, it's a Marvel show. And then that Marvel show is going to end. Yeah. We may give yeah, you like a week weeks. or two and then boom again. And that's going to happen all year long. I did just quick math. And I say, if there's six episodes, 30 weeks of Marvel, if they're only six episodes each, um, we'll see. Yeah. We don't have all the information. Uh, I'm just basing it off of Obi-Wan, kind of the limited series stuff, like it's six episodes because it's the big names and all that jazz. Yeah. Uh, but this looked amazing. And again, the trailer did exactly what I want a trailer to do. Yes. Yes. Tell me nothing, but make it look amazing. <laughs> right. Like, this is what I want. This was definitely my number one most anticipated um show of the marvel things that they've announced and so the fact that i'm getting it in six months is just uh, amazing just amazing i'm i'm on board i love it yes. uh what was next uh i believe it was oh my god is that what if i think that's what I, if i think what if was the next yeah so what if which is the animated series what if this happened instead of what actually happened? Right. And it's an animated series. Yeah. With most of the main actors reprising their role in voice form. Right. Yeah. Voice over. Yep. I'll watch it. It looks good. Summer 2021. Um, yep. it, it, for me, it wasn't like one of the big hitters. I was like, Ooh, Ooh, no. Ooh, but it was good enough. Yeah, it's cool to see Marvel into animation on Disney Plus. Yeah, you know something new, I should say, in animation. That's cool. With characters we're familiar with, and the versions of these characters that we're familiar with. Yep. Um, that was cool. And I guess the next is it, Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel. Yep. So this I know nothing about. Uh, I don't know anything about Miss Marvel. I don't know anything about the series. I don't know anything about the actor that they chose. I don't know anything about this show, which again is fantastic. And it does exactly what I need it to, which is tell me nothing and show me something cool. Um, what what were your thoughts on what they talked about and what you saw from Miss Marvel? You know, it's one of these things where like, she is inspired by Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers. And she gets these abilities. She, her character was really, really popular in the Marvel's Avengers video game that just came out. 
And so to see them taking that character that was pretty prominent in that video game and bringing it over here, I think it's a really good thing. It's going to, it's going to be a live action that's going to feature on a young woman, uh, a young woman of color, a young woman who is going to have these abilities and powers. And her role model is another superhero. That's a woman. Like I right. think, I think that this is going to be a, I think it's gonna be a good series. I also think it's going to have an opportunity to tell some different stories, give some different perspectives than we've seen in in the MCU a lot of. And I'm I'm down with that. Like like bring that on. Like let's see that. Yeah, I'm I'm excited for kind of a new perspective and new thoughts and and they certainly made it very clear that she's going to be in Captain Marvel 2. Right. And I would expect you know there will be a lot of crossover with those two. Yeah. Yep, yep. So now you have to watch Captain Marvel. <laughs> right. Finally. Okay. Eventually. Okay. <laughs> uh, I need to watch it again, probably. She-Hulk and the Hawkeye series. Yeah, we got confirmation on Hawkeye about Haley Steinfeld. Yep. Which isn't a surprise to anybody who follows kind of the news. Jeremy Renner coming back. That comes out this year, too, or this next year. I keep thinking this year, but right. uh, sometime late next year along that'll be kind of the the two ending shows for marvel miss miss marvel and uh and the hawkeye show yeah and she hulk is she no she hulk's not coming out this year isn't it or next year uh uh-uh. i'm looking at you it you got the three at the beginning of the year and then you got miss marvel and hawkeye i think she hulk's next well year. i guess they said both hawkeye and she hulk are currently in production and will debut on disney plus at some point in the near future is all they said Okay. Now, what's um, what's interesting about the She-Hulk stuff is that they said that Mark Ruffalo was yeah. going was going to appear in it and also Tim Roth. And if you remember Tim Roth was the bad guy who played uh who who ended up becoming Abomination in the 2008 Incredible Hulk which had Edward Norton in it. This was the only standalone Hulk film that's actually part of the MCU. And they're going to use the bad guy from that. But of course we have a different actor uh, in the MCU. I kind of thought that was interesting. Like Mark Ro- Ruffalo. Okay. Like I kind of see that. And then Tim Roth. I was like, and they're going to bring abomination back. I don't see any reason why that he would be anyone else since he right. is officially that character inside of the MCU already. I haven't seen that movie in such a long time. That I have no idea. They said that <laughs> name and I was like, okay, cool. Some guys in it. Okay. But Mark Ruffalo, excited. Yeah. Very yeah. excited. It'll be interesting. I don't know. I, again, the characters are unfamiliar to most people who are like me. I, I, I didn't read the comic books. I am excited about the Marvel Cinematic. But I have not, and I will be honest, I will not go read comic books about these characters. It's just not an, a medium that I'm interested in. Just, just not, with. just not where you're going to go. It's just not for me. And so the fact that I'm making these shows and showing me these characters and their origin stories is exciting. So I'm excited to see she Hulk's deal. And, and, you know, I don't know what the Hulk is going to do. I, mean, I assume he came before she did. Right. He's like going to mentor her in controlling anger. I don't know. We'll see. Yep. Now we got some movie news, Matt. We got some more yes. show. We got some show news. Like, so we know we're going to get secret invasion, which is going to be a series yes. kind of based on the scroll invasion. Uh, and that's going to have Samuel L. Jackson, Ben Mendelsohn. Um, yep. We know there's going to be something called, I think armor wars, which is going to be Don Cheadle returning as war machine. Right. So like we got that, they, something called iron heart. And I didn't see a lot on, on Got a lot that of information on these right now what do you think about the james gunn guardians of the galaxy so holiday special are you kidding me <laughs> i was hoping uh, it was going to air next year but they're like the christmas before the next one comes out we're like okay well, that's confusing and cryptic yep uh, i would guess 2022 assuming guardians 3 um 
I guess I don't know for sure. No one does. But that 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 I'm excited about. Obviously, right. come on. Ah, so good. It makes me it makes me so happy yeah, to see that. I, I mean, they mentioned Moon Knight. Pretty much, not a lot of information there. Right. Um, and then a show or a a series of shorts. I would assume for a younger audience, maybe not. Little, yeah. Little, little baby Groot. Little baby Groot. Come on, Called tell I am Groot. Tell me you're not going to watch that. Yeah, I'll get Emmy and I'll watch it. <laughs> The funny thing is, like, what he like, he says the same things. So, like, is it going to be just like him getting into like, I, I'm imagining like Muppet Babies, except Groot in that like Muppet Babies animation and be like, yes, doing all the things and getting into this stuff. And like, well, Groot, why did you I, do that? I am Groot. You know, like, it's yes. just going to be that, which is going to be adorable if that's what they do. Who? <laughs> i'm so in on that like i don't know why but like i'm so in on that that's just no why either I'm it kinda, sounds like, not so good but if emmy's if emmy thinks it's fun <sighs> or funny or anything. dude seriously she's gonna be all over that okay <laughs> i am grouped well i do know that you are likely excited about one of the movies that they announced almost no information or <sighs> fanfare Yep. And yep. Uh, that is the Fantastic Four. Oh, bring it, bring it, bring it. The first family of Marvel. Oh, yes. I, I knew you'd be excited I, about this. I, I want this. Like, when they bought Fox, and I was like, X-Men, Fantastic Four, they've got the rights for it. I, we've talked about this before. Like, what do they do first? What do they bring in first? I th- I think the X-Men is a harder thing to fit in there unless you really go with the whole multiverse idea. Yeah. But bringing in Reed Richards, Sue Storm, the Human Torch, and the Thing, like, they are royalty in the Marvel world. They are absolute royalty we have to have them in the MCU. And I also think like, yes, this is probably three, four years out. Like th- this is out of ways. Right. This yeah, is, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is not a, Hey, we're going to get a surprise. Fantastic four movie in 2022. No, no, right. no, 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 no. They said they're going to do this. They've probably got an idea of what they want to do, but they're still going to need writers to take this idea and write it into a script and get a treatment and get it like storyboard. Right. And they're going to have to hire a director and actors. Like this thing is not going to be happening for four years. That's just my guess. Four years out, maybe 2024. Yeah, but you're probably right. But the fact that we're now talking about it and we know that it's going to happen. There was some other, like there's some other things that were talked about, like with the, I say the multiverse because we know the new Doctor Strange is called the Multiverse of Madness. We know there's going to be multiverse stuff that's happening with Spider-Man 3 because of all the major freaking leaks about yeah. all the people that are being cast in this movie. So, like, we know that's going to happen. Well, he Kevin Feige even said you're going to need to Doctor Strange to understand right. Spider-Man 3. Right. And so he also re-emphasized how different... Yes. Uh, Doctor Strange is going to be, and how he made it very clear, it's scary. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in, man. So I'm not in for the scary part. I'm going to see it for oh, sure. Yeah, you I'm you in. know me. You're a simple man. I'm a scaredy cat man. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want the scared stuff. But I love the fact that we've just got a teaser of the Fantastic Four. That we're yep. going to, we're going to bring back the first family. We're going to get them home. We're going to have them where they belong and they're going to be in the MCU and Kevin Feige is going to be at the helm and we're going to get a fantastic four film that is going to be good. It's going to be, it's going to, Oh, I want this so bad. I am so (laughs) done with all the other crap. Fantastic four. We've had to deal with like, let's make this good because here's the thing. Once we get the fantastic four, the other Holy grail, Matt is the X-Men. I know. And they're going to do that. And once the X-Men and the Fantastic Four are here, the possibilities are limitless for all the things they can do. And can we just say, like, 
we can get freaking Doctor Doom as a villain in the MCU. I don't know who they're going to cast for that, but Doctor Doom it is a Doctor Doom is an amazing villain, and we need. And this has been my one of my complaints about the MCU is we get some really cool villains, and then they get killed off in that movie, and we don't see them again. Yeah, we need some villains, kind of like Thanos, who kind of bridged a bunch. Doctor Doom yeah. can be a villain that bridges a lot of movies. So, ah, looking forward to it. I know it's a long way away, and we got other stuff to talk about. But right. that, that was exciting. I know it was like a nothing I, hey. four seconds, but wow. <laughs> I knew you were going to be excited. I'm yes. Another thing, I'm, not, I'm not not excited for that. I'm indifferent. Yeah. Um, because I don't know the comics. I only know the movies, and they haven't been great. Um, the other movies, or the other movie they announced that was new that we hadn't heard of yet is a movie I just don't care about, and that's Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Really? I just don't care about their stories. Oh, I, I really like I'm the sorry. Ant-Man movies. I love Paul Rudd. <laughs> and I love Ant-Man the character. Okay. But his movies feel like like B-movie Marvel movies. Oh. Like afterthoughts. I see. I I, don't yeah, I don't look at them as afterthoughts, but I definitely look at them as that they want to have other characters other characters that help fill out roles in the world, but they can be their own things. Like I, we actually watched the Ant-Man movie with the boys not that long ago. And, yeah. and I really enjoyed rewatching the movie and I was like, okay, maybe we should have waited a little bit before we watched it with the boys. Cause maybe they're a little too young. Right. Um, I like that. It's got a title quantum mania. Um, you know, what is it going to be? Where are they going to go? What are they going to do with it? I don't know. But I like it. I'm good. I think uh, I think we could see some time traveling shenanigans potentially with this movie. Yeah, it's called Quantum Mania. I wouldn't expect anything less than weird quantum physic alterations. And you know how I love a good time travel movie. So yeah. Uh, yeah. we, we did, we did get, you know, some, some, a little bit of information on black widow eternals, Shang Chi and the Thor love and thunder. Um, I think a lot of that stuff's just been pushed back on the calendar, but it's going to go forward. Like, you know, as soon as they can with some of this stuff in the movie verse, um, they talked about Chadwick Boseman. I thought that was interesting. The, the news yeah. that they said that uh, that they're not recasting the character. Which is what we thought they should do. Yeah. In our discussion that we had, we thought that you should not recast, but you should move forward, which is exactly what they're doing. Right. Yep. Which I think is, I think is really, really good. I think it's the right way yeah. to go. Um, I'm trying to, th- I'm trying to think what else was covered. Cause I feel like there was just so the much they mentioned. Yes. Just that it's still happening. A thing. It, like it's it's there on the periphery. Like yep. it's not quite there, but. Right. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. I mean, every everything else felt like everything else they kind of mentioned seemed to be like a little more information on some things we already know. Right. At, at, yeah. at this point, like we've I think we've kind of covered some of the the big, big the things. Most, absolutely. Yep. I was not expecting this kind of info dump. It happened the same day that the game awards happened. And like I said, my life kind of got crazy. And so I was, I, I'd even forgot that the investor call was happening. And so I was like, Oh, okay. You know, and then you sent me a message. You're like, have you seen all the stuff that happened at the investor call? There was like this many star Wars shows announced and this many Marvel things. And I was like, don't say anymore. I gotta go. I gotta go find this. I gotta go read this. And, it took me a while to like read through all this stuff and watch all these trailers. And cause there's a yeah. lot, a lot of stuff. Uh, as far as like a uh, investor call goes to me, this is like the biggest, probably like outside of like a comic con type event. Like they really just said like, look, the future of Disney right now is, is shows that are going to be going on our streaming service and movies. 
because we know that they've like, you know, with the COVID and all the stuff that's going around, they've, they've had to let go a lot of people and they're, they're really forcing their business model to go into this new streaming service that they have, which makes sense because what did we say? 86 million subscribers, like hello. Yeah. But Matt, the sheer amount of info that they dropped, um, I don't know how anyone could say that at $7 a month for this upcoming year or $8 a month with the $1 price, you know, hike, right. Disney plus isn't going to be a service that's worth every penny. I think it's worth every penny currently at the moment with what's there. Oh yeah. But next year, 2021, like you are ripping Disney off is how I feel with $8 a month. Like you're going to be getting your money's worth and then so, and we said that that's what Disney needed to do. Otherwise they were going to lose a lot of subscribers. They did. When I got done with the call and I was watching this with Jesse and we were just like, wow, well they addressed all the things that was like pissed off about when we yeah. reviewed it after a year. Um, and I was floored. And I think that's a lot of investors were because it's indicative of or, or what's indicative of how successful this call was, was stock after the call shot up to an all time high for Disney. Yeah. And that's with all the COVID and the parks being shut down. And you're like, wow. Right. <laughs> right. That was a really, really important call to investors and stockholders who need to see, like, yeah, Disney Plus has been great and you've got a lot of subscribers, but how are you going to keep them? Because you mm. said a lot, but you haven't done a lot yet. Right. And yep. then, then Kevin Feige stepped out and said, I'm going to show you some. Mic drop, did. like seriously. And that's why you close with Marvel. In you know, maybe next year they close with, with Star Wars because Star Wars has the best stuff. Right. But amazingly enough, Star Wars didn't have the most important best stuff for the investors this year. Yeah. It's I think amazing. that's just I think that's fair. Call. But next uh, year, bring out Dave Filoni. Oh, please. Gosh, someone else. Hopefully she's fired by then. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, I, I'm not going to go that far. I mean, I don't want to see someone lose her job. Like, re- I do. Re- put her somewhere if else. Job, get fired. If, I mean, maybe she's good at parts of her. Put her somewhere else. Put Dave Filoni in charge. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I, I, I don't wish bad ill will luck on, well, on anyone, wish but ill will on her. I just want her to get fired because she's not good at her job. <laughs> Maybe she's good at something else. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But put <laughs> Dave Filoni in charge. Yes. Or at least if you're not going to do that, let Dave Filoni do the presenting. Yeah. Because his love of the product comes through. So anyway, right. I, I love this. I thought that this investor call was amazing. It was on the level of like just a crazy comic con, like series of announcements, like, and another one and another one. Like we're just going to keep tossing them on and on and on. So Matt, this is going to be probably a very hard question of the week. Oh boy. And let's start it. You and I will, we'll talk about it and then we'll put it out there to the super friends. What was the one biggest thing you were the most hyped about that was discussed or released or teased or announced during the investor call. Okay. Uh, after talking about this with you, cause it's changed a little bit. Okay. I'm I, I'll be honest. Uh, the Obi-Wan series getting Hayden Christensen and basically saying, we're going to see these two meet again is probably the most exciting thing that happened for me. That's number one. That's a really, really, really good one. <sighs> I'm so torn because on the MCU side, it's Fantastic Four. Oh, yeah. It's that it's the announcement of the Fantastic Four on the MCU side for me. There was a lot of great stuff, but it's that. But on the Star Wars side, the Rogue Squadron for me is big. Uh, Obi-Wan's big. Like, I want to see Obi-Wan really bad like that. Yeah. And then Ahsoka and like the, the potential for the Dave Filoni Clone Wars Rebels continuation mm-hmm. story. I gosh, I. 
I'm going to say because it's closer. I'm going to go with Ahsoka. I'm going to okay. go. With, uh, it's it's so close. Like the problem is, I think we're four years out of the Fantastic Four and I oh, yeah. and I'm going to have a real hard time keeping my hype level up for four years. Sure. Uh, but with the Ahsoka stuff, it just narrowly edges out both Obi-Wan and Rogue Squadron, which are right there for me on the Star yeah. Wars side. Um. I want to see Thrawn. I want to see Ezra Bridger. I want to see Harris yeah. Syndulla. I want to see Sabine Wren. Like there's a part of me that says like, we have a potential to see some old friends that we haven't seen in a long time and tell some amazing stories that Dave Filoni knows how to tell. And, uh, I'm here for that. I'm here for that hard. So Ahsoka is going to be the thing, uh, for me. And it did change during our conversation tonight. Right, right. Might I just add, we forgot completely to talk about the Andor series. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. The teaser trailer. Yeah, the casting Andor series. Yep. Uh, and we did coming out again, though. I don't know why Star Wars takes longer than Marvel does. 2022. That one's already started filming, though, so I don't really understand it. But yeah. whatever. 2022 for that one. And we didn't really cover all the Pixar Disney stuff because there's still a bunch right. more there's stuff. Like, so it just... Much. You can't you can't cover it all. We'd be here for four more hours if we tried. So right. super friends, that's going to be the question of the week for you is going to be what was the one, the one thing that got you the most hyped from the uh, Disney investors call that just happened this last week. And we will read your answers next week. Now, obviously, if you're listening to this Last week, we did hype and say we were going to be doing a movie club based on my favorite Christmas movie. And obviously, we didn't talk about that this, that this week because of this big news and all this information. So next week, you will get a movie club right before the Christmas holidays. And we will talk about our favorite one of our favorites, Matt. I don't know if it's your favorite. It's, it's literally like, it's my, two. yeah, it's my, I think it's my absolute favorite Christmas movie. We'll talk about that then next week. So we do apologize. Super friends. We didn't mislead you a little bit, but a uh, Disney Marvel nerdgasm, We just couldn't help ourselves and we didn't want to, and we didn't want to let it sit an additional week because then it's Christmas and then it's new year's and then it's gone. Like it's too far back yeah. to go back a month worth of information. So we will uh, get to that next week. So, super friends, from all of us here at the Fortress of Nerditude, to all of you out there, wherever you may be, may the Force be with you always. <laughs>